This is your girl, Yannick Taylor, a.k.a. Priestess, hostess of Conversations with the Priestess. Here's a preview of what you may hear on Conversations with the Priestess. We weren't meant for monogamy, let's be honest. Like, we have needs, let's be real. And communicating that, what you want, what you don't want, what sets up... Now, this drink is brown, because I learned something. Since I'm older, I can't do brown liquor anymore. Also, I noticed since I started on hormone replacement there, HRT, in 2015, me and certain liquors don't mix, don't mix well. I don't know whether... And I recognize that a lot of men love to be dominated by women. And that's because men are seen as these leaders, as this big alpha male dominant thing, dominant being. And... Because they're put on this pedestal of being leaders, sometimes they want to be submissive. Back when I cosplayed a butch queen in South Carolina around 2011, I was on Craigslist. This is when Craigslist was bumping and before they had gotten rid of the personal section. I hope you enjoyed that preview. Join me on Wednesdays at 9 p.m. for Priestess After Dark. Full video versions of the podcast can be found on patreon.com forward slash CWT Priestess. And join me on Fridays at noon for our regular Friday post. Live, love, and be free. Smooches. Available on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, YouTube, anywhere you download and stream podcasts. Unwanted, Chapter 1. You've heard the prelude to this little story. And I, Topaz James, am going to fill you in on what happened with me and AJ at the ninth month mark. The music that you hear in the background is Five Star by Cosmic. Editing and production and voices and story is written all by Yanni Taylor. If you're listening to this, that means that you are a patron on Ko-Fi, Patreon, or Podbean. Let's get into my story. The ninth month of our relationship began in mid-April. It was a nice, crisp spring day. I will never forget it. The weather was making that transition from cold to warm, with a little bit of winter still in the air. And AJ and I had planned a great dinner at my place, full of rosé, moscato, cheesecake, pot roast, vegetables, and our favorite movies. He had called me earlier that day while he was on his lunch break. Hey babe, happy anniversary. Happy anniversary to you as well, babe. I got you a gift. I have something special for you as well, babe. Okay, babe, I can't wait to see you. How is work going? It's going all right, babe. You know, work is work. Make that money, babe. Ain't nothing like a black man working. <laughs> there you go, babe. But look, my lunch break is almost over. I'm going to hit you back, all right? See you at 7.30. Okay, babe. Love you. Love you, too. I never thought that me as a trans woman who felt like that she didn't quite pass would find love. But I did, and it was going on nine months strong. So I began cooking and cleaning and picking out my dinner outfit and planning what I was gonna wear for the dessert activities, if you know what I mean. It dawned on me that at 6.45, I hadn't heard from AJ. So I called him. Hmm, that's odd, I thought. I'm getting nothing but voicemail right now. I figured he would call me if he was running late from work or if something had happened. Then I figured he must have been in the shower. He only lived 15 minutes away. He wasn't like Chad. He didn't stand me up repeatedly like Chad did. And he didn't 
lie and cheat on me with every living, breathing thing that had a mouth and a hole. But nonetheless, I left him a voicemail. Hey, babe, just making sure that you're all right. Call me when you get this message. Can't wait to see you. If you're running late, just call or text me, okay? Not long after that, I got a text message. Hey, babe. Just want to let you know, I need to get something off of my chest. I text him back. We'll talk about it when you get here. You won't see me tonight, babe. You won't see me ever again. When I met you, I thought I could manage dating a trans woman such as yourself. But I realize I can't date a trans woman. Not a trans woman like you. I still love you, but right now, I need to be alone. Much love. Stay positive. Keep your head up and keep creating your dreams. This had to be some sick joke. So I tried to call him again. And it just rang and rang and rang. I didn't know what to do. My heart was confused and I wanted to cry. I wanted to break stuff. I couldn't call Sharla. I refused to call to Neil or Denzel. I imagined them laughing at me like Carrie. I felt that I was Carrie in her white dress as pig's blood drenched her soul. Numbly, I walked into my kitchen. And I grabbed the Moscato and Rosé and opened them both. I threw away the pot roast that I had been cooking just for him since that was his favorite. I threw the cheesecake in the floor and I began to fix myself a nice hot bubble bath. Surely this hot bubble bath will wake me up from the nightmare that was ensuing in the depths of my soul, in the depths of my entire being. Was this really real what was happening? I stayed in the bathtub listening to Aretha Franklin. It hurts like hell because I was hurting like hell. My phone was still in the place where I left it on the floor. I drank so much that I didn't wake up till the next morning. My eyes were wet with tears. I couldn't stop crying uncontrollably. Surely this was a nightmare that I had endured. Was it justified? The next morning I got up and I didn't want to be bothered. Sat there and I just sat on the side of my bed, reliving, replaying the moments of the night before. I had lost the love of my life. And he had the audacity to say a trans woman like me? What did he mean a trans woman like me? Now I know that I didn't pass like some of the other girls. I knew that there were certain things that weren't deemed desirable about me. I was a thin girl, yet talented. And, you know, I never knew that this would come to this. Um, 
I thought, surely, surely this was my fault. I, I thought, surely, that he loved me regardless. And then my phone rang. And I didn't know what to do. It was Sharla. And I didn't want to tell her what happened, but I just had to get what was out of, in my soul out. Couldn't find the words to say. So I answered the phone. Hello. Hey girl, rise and shine. Hey girl, what's up? Nothing much, you all right girl? I'm okay girl, I just woke up. Are you sure? Cause you sound like you've been crying. No, I haven't been crying, I haven't been crying. Don't lie to me girl, what's going on? I know you. <sighs> girl. AJ broke up with me last night. Say what? He did what? Yes, he did. Huh? He did it via text message. That bastard. We were supposed to have date night last night. I know. I had cooked this extravagant meal. All his favorites, I bet. I was cooking his favorite pot roast. And made cheesecake and... Girl. It all went from sugar to shit. Within minutes. Girl, just come on now, girl. Girl, I'm just gonna stay home. I don't wanna go to brunch today. We'll bring it to you then. No, y'all don't have to do that. Y'all don't have to do that. Girl, no. You're going through right now. Girl, I just need to be left alone. You do not need to be left alone right now. You need the support of your girls and your friends. Are you sure, Charlotte? Girl, it is not a problem. We're gonna look out for you. Y'all don't have to do that. Girl, shut up. Now get your ass in the shower and okay. stop crying. Let me get in the shower. Okay, then. Love you, girl. I love you, too. Don't let that man get you down. Okay. So I climbed into the shower in my bedroom. Grabbed my favorite pomegranate scented body wash. And I took a shower. But it was tear stained. I was wondering what became of a broken heart. At that moment, I felt like I could never love again. Will Topaz be able to recover from the heartbreak? Will the company of friends do her any good? Be sure to stay tuned for the next episode of Unwanted.